Hey everyone, Lee Lowell here from SmartOptionSaw.com. How's everyone doing today? It's Saturday, December 17, 2022. We're back for another edition of the Saturday Synopsis. What do we do here in these free YouTube videos? Well, as the title says, what's the market's next move? We're here on Saturday Synopsis to try to figure out what's been happening in the stock market and where it may be headed next. Uh, for us as option traders, and maybe you as an option trader as well, one of the most important things uh, in figuring out whether you're going to be profitable or not as an options trader is figuring out where the stock may or may not move to in the future. As you are aware, as an options trader, they all have an expiration date. So if the stock doesn't make the move needed by the expiration date, you will end up with a losing trade. Now, I will say as an option seller, uh, picking the stock's correct direction is not always needed to have a profitable trade. So that is really important. We as option sellers, we try to figure out where the stock is not going to go. And it's much easier to be successful with options trading when the stock doesn't go uh, where it needs to go. I know that sounds weird, but we're always trying to figure out where the stock isn't going to go. And, and in that case, you have a much wider profitability range or probability range to be successful as an option seller the stock can move up can move down can move sideways and you can still be profitable so in the saturday synopsis we will try to figure out and we will look at charts we will look at charts of indexes and charts of stocks to try to figure out what the stock market's next move is and pinpoint some stocks that may be ready for certain option trades we at we at the op a smart option seller we sell naked put options and we sell put option spreads, put option credit spreads. So those are mostly bullish to neutral type of directional types of option trades. And so we look for the stocks to tell us, you know, when it's time to get in and out of a trade. So this is what we do here with the, at the Saturday synopsis. We try to figure out what the stock market's next move is. So let's just jump right in and see what's happening. And before we do that, let me just go to our website here real quick because I want to make sure you guys get our free report. We are, as I said, put option sellers. And if you go to our website, smartoptionseller.com, click on the put selling basics link right here. This is the part of our website where I have my free report, put selling basics. And if you want to get a free copy, all you have to do is put in your name and email address uh, in this little form here and all of our all over our website we have this form as well so if you're looking around the website you can always fill it out uh, we will send you an email with a link to the free copy of the put selling basics that's what it's called you can see in this little picture here put selling basics free report that I wrote so if you're interested in selling put options or are interested in learning about what put selling is all about and why we love it so much uh, fill it out and and go here and as we're talking about it our services tab right here We have our two newsletters right here and our one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions that that help newcomers Get a step up in their options trading game. All right, so that's that let's go right into the charts and Talk about what the stock market's next move may be and what's been happening recently We always look at the S&P 500 first as represented by the SPY the SPY this is the exchange traded fund for the S&P 500. It's one of the most widely traded uh, ETFs out there. Uh, if you've been with us for a while, you know this is what we do. We always look at the charts. What you see on your screen here is a daily bar chart, an open, high, low, close bar chart of whatever stock or index we're looking at. Um, it's got about a two year look back period, real estate on my chart here. Uh, obviously you can see some lines here. I try to keep my charts pretty simple. I have three moving averages that I use. I have a 20-day, 50-day, 200-day, all simple moving averages. And those are very widely followed types of moving averages. You can see the lines here. We got, this is the 200-day moving average, this, this one here. We've got a blue 20-day moving average, which is here, you can see it. And then the 50-day is this one. And down here is the only other technical indicator that I use which is the RSI, it's 14 day look back period, the RSI indicator. It's an oscillator that moves, you know, from overbought to oversold levels 
here's the 80 level here and the 20 level here as the overbought and oversold um, thresholds. And that's pretty much all I use. Now I will draw patterns. You will see a lot of patterns on my charts, mostly channels. These, these um, lines here that signify a channel, you connect the, ho the highs of the, the stock and the lows of the stock, and it creates a channel. It just tells you which way a stock is moving. And it will continue on in that direction until something pushes it in the other direction. So obviously you can see the market's moving up and now the market's moving down, goes up, down. So what we've been talking about here over basically all of 2022 is how much the market has been going down. Back here, January 2022, and it's been just about a whole year now, the market has just been in this downtrend. And yep, we have some fits and starts, ups and downs, but overall, the trend is down. Now, if we want to draw line just to kind of see the overall trend of the market throughout the year, you can see that it's just basically been down. And 2022 has not been a great year for the bulls. Uh, yes, we have these, these rallies back, but they kept getting sold off. Rally, sell, rally. And here, just recently, we've had another um, resistance level that has knocked the market back down. So let's talk about what's been going on recently. Um, 390 was my level in the sand for the support area on the S&P 500 or 3,900, depending on what you're looking at. The index itself is 10 times greater than the SPY here. So... <clears throat> Just this past week, we had on Tuesday the CPI data, which is the Consumer Price Index. It's just it's our basically it's basically our our number that tells us how inflation has been going in the United States. And the numbers came down a little bit, and so you can see this move right here. This one day, this was Tuesday. The market had a nice pop up to the 410 level, and unfortunately, on Wednesday this week after the cpi data we had the federal reserve meeting and they were giving us their latest interest rate level along with jerome powell who's the chairman of the fed his speech after that and obviously you can see after tuesday the market just has collapsed back down and finished uh 383 383 dollars on the spy so a couple things here that of note is that a the Federal Reserve, although they did raise interest rates not as high as they've been, we've been getting 75 basis point interest rate rises. This one was a 50 basis point rise, so it was a lower amount. But the speech that Powell gave was more on the we're still not we're still concerned about inflation. So we're, we're going to be a little bit more aggressive than I think the market was hoping for. I think the market was hoping for a softer stance. Yes, we're going to pull back on interest rates and inflation is starting to come down. Everything's looking better. The Fed, uh, Jerome Powell, really didn't give us that kind of um, feeling. So the market just has dropped. Um, so after Tuesday, Wednesday, so Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, three days, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the market just came down and fell through my 390 line in the sand here to close at 383 on Friday, yesterday, December 16th. It's unfortunate, you know, because I was feeling pretty good towards, uh, you know, the early part of December. It was hanging above that 390 level going up, hit that 410 right here, and then the market just crapped back down. So now we are back in this general long downtrending channel. You can see we tried to pop above it. That was our last gasp right there, hoping to continue. But, you know, Jerome Powell put, put uh, uh, you know, he was the party pooper and put us right back down into this channel here. So where is the market headed? What's going to happen now? Well, here is the 50-day moving average, this line right here. And we can see that the market closed below it. Here's a little dash mark on the right side of the bar right here. That's where the market closed. Closing prices are very important because it, it can show momentum for, you know, possibly the next day. And it closed below the 50-day moving average. So really, the next line in the sand is, is it looks like it's got, you know, all this movement, all this area down here 
to come to this next level, which is a little bit above 360, which was sort of a, a pivot point in the past. And obviously our low here around $348. Do not want to see it go all the way back down there, but you know, that could be the momentum at least for next week, we probably can see some follow through and come back down to more selling. Unfortunate, unfortunate for the bulls, unfortunate for us as put option sellers and put option credit spread sellers where we want the market to be more bullish to neutral that um, it kind of puts a damper on us putting out new trades. Now, for all of 2022, when the market's telling us it wants to go down, we've been taking lesser and lesser trades in our services because the market's not showing us bullish patterns. Uh, 2022 has been the year that we've taken the least amount of trades in our services since we um, started back in 2017. And because that's the market is telling us it's not time to get into new trades, it's going down. So we follow what the market does and let's let it tell us when it's time to get into new trades. Now we, we on this, swing high on this swing up, uh, I should say, the last month or two, we had gotten into some new trades, which uh, some that we're still in and some we've already taken profits on. So that's a good thing about, you know, option trades were shorter term in nature, you know, one to three months out in time, we can get out for profits, even if the market moves against us. So, but still we're taking lighter amount of trades here. Anyway, so the assessment is for the S&P 500, um, you know, this week was not a good week, put us back into this solidly in the downtrend here. So it looks like we may have some follow through with it for next week. Let's look at the triple Q's for the NASDAQ. And we can see that same pattern last couple days of this week was down. Uh, here's the lines in the sand around the 270 level, 260 level for this is the this is the triple Q's. Let's bring this over here we, so we can see what we're talking about here. <clears throat> um, same thing came down. Here's the support. So momentum for next week probably going to come down. Let's look at the Dow Jones. The Dow has been the strongest of these three major indexes. Right here was Tuesday as well. Popped above this resistance line right in the three low 340 range at, at it at, and it got above the prior high here in the middle of August. So things were looking good right around here. And then obviously this week as well. We have some confluence here. We've got the 200 day and the 50 day moving average kind of converging. So the market did stop right above those two levels so maybe maybe we might get some if there's some some good news coming out next week for whatever may be uh, maybe we'll be able to bounce but the dow had been the strongest got hit hard this week uh, along with the other indexes so let's take a look at some individual stocks see what's going on there and uh, try to get an assessment let's see if there's any bright spots out there let's we always look at some of the bigger names because those are the most uh, popular uh, I don't have time to go through every single one, but we'll look at popular names here. We got Apple, Apple, everybody knows Apple. There's billions and billions of iPhones and iPads and Mac computers owned around the world. Uh, incredible company, but obviously, you know, it gets sold off too. Here is Apple, the line in the sand. This here is the support. You can see the line that I drew, uh, drew this many weeks and months ago, right here right around you know 135 134 and a half seemed to be that level and the market brought apple down below it you can see the little teeny dash mark on the right side of this bar right here closed below the support right around 135 was the support so um there may be momentum next week can really knock it back down where is that next support for apple all the way down here is the next line of support Probably, uh, if it doesn't hit this this low right here, right below 130, this this guy, this day right here, was in June. So that's about 128, 129, and then beyond that, we have this support area right here, probably around 122, 123. So when you're looking for your next area of support, you have to look back to where the support was in the past, and this was June of uh, June, July of 2021. So we're here. The next real support would be right here, this low, 
And if it gets beyond that, then we go back to here. So uh, I would really like to see it bounce. You know, we're on this support line. You know, here is support. It bounced here, bounced here, here, here. Will it bounce here? That's what these support lines do. They kind of hold the selling and it leads to buying. But if the selling's too strong and it goes through, then you have to look at these prior past um, levels as well. So, you know, everything's coming off. You know, the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday this past week was was not fun, was not great. Everything's been selling off. So that's Apple. Keep an eye on the 135 level. See if that'll bounce for next week. We'll look at Tesla. Uh, you know, I've talked about Tesla so much. I'm not a fan of Tesla. I don't, we don't make trades in Tesla. Elon Musk, who knows what he's doing over there at Twitter, but obviously Tesla shares are taking a beating because of it, um, has fallen greatly below this prior support area. It's now at the 150 level. Uh, it hasn't been that low since we got to go back. Let's go back to the, uh, let's look at the weekly chart here. This is a weekly chart. So the last time Tesla was at 150, this is post split now, uh, was what's the date here? This was November of 2020. So a little over two years ago was the last time it was here. Here was a, an area of um, support, congestion. Let's draw this. So you can see this little, we can draw a little triangle here. That's called a congestion pattern. And that happens when the price action gets tighter and tighter, and tighter until it just explodes one way or the other out of the apex of the triangle. And obviously it went higher and it kept going higher. So now it's come back down and here is probably the next area of support right around here, which is maybe $135 a share or so. So keep an eye on Tesla. I mean, it's still going down. Um, you know, it's, Probably going to find some support, as I said, probably around that 135 level if it keeps going down. So that's Tesla. Uh, let's see what other stocks we have. We can look at Amazon. We'll look at some of the bigger names here. Amazon has greatly fallen through. Where's my daily chart here? Okay, so Amazon's fallen through the support uh, right, up, right around $100 a share. Here was the line. See all the support? You can find the support where where a stock or index bounces a number of times. So you can see the number of times it bounced at the 100 level, came up, and then it was kind of trading around it, trying to find some footing, but it had succumbed, and now it's at $87, $86 a share. Where is the next level of support for Amazon? Let's go back to the weekly here. So it's... It's right on support. There was a lot of action here in the past. This was in 2019, all of 2019, right here. Right, It's right at that level. So let's draw a line here and just kind of, you know, we can just kind of put this on the chart. I'm going to move this over here. Hang on. Let's do that again. I'm going to move this over, put some support line here and see if that'll hold uh, for the next leg down. Okay, so we'll go back to the daily chart. So on the daily chart, that supports, you know, mid 80s as possible next support for Amazon. Um, you can see here, here's Amazon. I just want to show you the symbol we're looking at. So everything's looking kind of weak. Let's go back to our chart here. Microsoft as well had been in the long down channel downward channel got into this upward channel but you can see it has broken down and below the upward channel here so um you know everything's moving lower at the moment in time unfortunately uh intel still down at lows nike uh had been moving up pretty good had this nice uptrend here caught the here's the 200 day moving average caught the resistance right here and starting to move lower um, let's see if we can find anything amd i always talk about amd the chip stocks was finding some support here and now it's you know turn lower again i mean it got hit this week but not 
too bad. Uh, we had a position on AMD. We had, we sold a naked put that we took off for profit this week. Even though the mark was coming off, we were still able to make a profit on that. So we got out of that trade, but still in the, the long downward trending channel here. Um, chip stocks, we can look at Micron as part of that as well. You can see down trending channels trying to find some sideways support here. So Micron and um, NVIDIA, these are the biggies. NVIDIA was also in this downtrending channel. But look at this. They had a nice little up move here, but caught the caught the 200-day moving average as well. So we can also draw a little channel here just to, just to show us, you know, what had been going on. Channels kind of help you see which way the market's moving and where it might be breaking out below or above and so it, it's it's kind of hanging in there so everything's on the defensive this week uh, apple amazon netflix we had a position on netflix we sold a put option credit spread on netflix which we took profits on this week as well caught it at the highs we got out uh, for a decent gain on that but also netflix uh, this week you can see uh, got hit as well but still sort of still in this sort of uptrend here which is good we can kind of draw a line here so we want to see netflix continue to maybe catch a bounce here here's a 50-day moving average right here so we want to see it catch a bounce and move higher next week will there be a catalyst you know coming into the end of the year late december holidays you know market slows down not a lot of activity not a lot of government reports anymore towards the end of the year so there may just be some sideways action to lower path of least resistance possibly lower now until uh, we turn the calendar over to january uh, let's see what other stocks we have walmart also a favorite of mine got hit pretty good this week um, finding possible support right here in the 50-day moving average uh, let's see what other stocks we have here. Let's move that up there. Uh, Disney. Talk about these stalwart companies. Disney, Walmart, Nike. Um, you know, these stocks are going to go up in the long run. We just have to get through this nastiness for now. Uh, Disney coming back down to the lows here. This was, you know, mid-80s. Uh, got hit this week. So if you love Disney and, and, you, and you're looking to hold for a long time, you know, we haven't seen these levels hold down here um, in a while. Now, the COVID low was around $80 a share back in March of 2020. It had the, it has, here's the support line we drew right around $80. So maybe if you're holding out for 80 and it has confluence with the 200 day, the upsloping 200 day moving average. So Disney, you know, $80 could be that great support area for Disney potential. These aren't trade recommendations by any means. This is just what I'm seeing on the charts. So if your goal is to buy some Disney, you know, if it gets down to the 80 level and holds, you know, that might be your opportunity to scale into some shares there or however you may want to play it. So that's Disney. Um, let's go back to the daily chart. We looked at Tesla. Now let's look, look at some of the the healthcare stocks, which have, have done pretty well, healthcare, energy. So this is Eli Lilly. Here's a symbol, LLY. Eli Lilly, nice, slow, uptrending chart. You know, not caught up in all the down moves. Every other chart and index is down move. Eli Lilly moving higher throughout the last two years. Bristol Myers, this is BMY. Also, it's had an, an up move most of the year. You know, some fits and starts, but overall going up. Merck, you can see the symbols over here, top left. Merck also going up, 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 up. And Johnson & Johnson, kind of flat line for most of the years, but but not really caught in the down low. So the healthcare industry has been strong. Pharma, pharmaceuticals, you can always get in all of those with the XLV, the healthcare ETF. As you can see, it's been mostly sideways, but the last couple months has had this nice uptrend here. So you decide whether you want some individual stocks or the the ETF as a whole. Uh, energy, as we know, here's Exxon Mobil. Energy's been going up most of the year. Exxon Mobil, XOM is the symbol. We'll look at Chevron, another 
oil company. Here's the symbol CVX, Chevron going up. And then the utility industry, we talk about Con Edison, Consolidated Edison. Here's the symbol ED uh, going up. We when, when a utility company like this gets hit hard like that quickly, you have to take notice and you got to get into the trade. When it got oversold on the RSI, this is when I got into some shares here. Uh, Southern Company SO is the symbol. Same thing. Just like Consolidated Edison got hit really hard, got oversold on the RSI, chance to jump in. Um, you know, we sold some put options on SO. Um, you know, down in this range and it's been working out for us trying to take profits on that position as well. So you have to have to look at the charts, have to see which stocks are bucking that downtrend and moving higher over time. Uh, let's see what else we have. Kellogg, Verizon, almost decided to get into Verizon this week, but still held off. I do like Verizon, but not time to get into that trade yet. PayPal still scraping along the lows. Square, its partner in the online uh, payment sector, just two different companies, not partners, but in that same sector, scraping along the lows. Costco, let's look at Costco. I guess I had drawn this. So we had drawn this congestion pattern, this triangle. Uh, I was getting tighter and tighter. Looks like it's breaking out to the downside. And so you know, here's the next support this day right here. And then, and then the last support will be here uh, if it continues to go lower. So once the congestion pattern starts to break to one side, either higher or lower, it will continue in that direction for a period of time until, you know, something comes along and turns it around. So Costco looking a little weak right now. Uh, McDonald's has been strong, um, you know, mostly upwards with a sideways slant. Pepsi, I also want to show you. These are great dividend paying companies. You know, one thing that helps you if, as stocks go lower in price, they have the dividend payments to kind of offset that downward action a little bit. You know, you get paid to hold these stocks. It won't make up for all the, the down moves, but at least the dividend payments can help buffer some of that. Look at Pepsi. Nice, just this nice slow up move throughout the whole year. Yeah, it has some down moves, but still overall, bottom left, top right still moving up you know you look for these great dividend paying companies uh, if you're going to invest for the long run um, 3m minnesota mining let's take a look at uh, black and decker this is stanley black and decker i'll show you the symbol here um, let's open up the chart swk another great dividend long-term dividend payer we've taken a put sell position on this company right now uh, it's, you know, it's looks like it's flatlined here. So sideways action is fine. Um, you know, that's also a good thing when you're selling options. Sideways action is good because the, t the time decay feature of options works in your favor as an option seller. What does that mean? When we when you sell an option versus buying an option, that option value will decay no matter what's happening with the stock. OK. Every option has an expiration date. As the option moves towards that expiration date, it starts to shed a little bit of its value each day, regardless of what else is happening. So if the stock is moving sideways, that option contract is decaying in price. And for an option seller, that's a good thing because that means eventually you can buy that option back at a cheaper price and lock in your profit. So that's why we like to sell put options. Um, Home Depot and Lowe's, we'll take a look at that. We also took a position in Lowe's. Um, this is Home Depot, has this nice little up move here. Uh, Lowe's, here's a symbol, L-O-W. Um, you know, upwards to sideways action. We, we sold a put option credit spread on Lowe's. So we're waiting for that thing to work in our favor. And here's Warren Buffett, Berkshire Hathaway, Class B shares. Here it is, BRK.B. And depending on what um, chart system you use, it's it's either a dot B or a slash B. BRKB means the class B shares trading right closed right at three hundred dollars a share yesterday. So this is Warren Buffett. This is his fund that he runs. One of the greatest investors of all time. We can go back to our website here. Um, if you look in our services tab and click on the shop link right here, uh, here's a report that I wrote 
uh, about Warren Buffett and another different options trading strategy that you can piggyback Warren Buffett and all his stock picks um, for a different way of than just buying all the shares of stock. It's an options trading strategy, something different than what we talk about here. So if you're interested, just click on this picture here and it'll bring you to the report that I wrote. Uh, let's go back to the charts here. So that's Warren Buffett. Uh, you know, even he gets caught up in down moves. You know, no one's immune, but he's been doing it for a long, long time. He's been very successful. Here's Facebook, um, you know, kind of scraping along the lows. IBM got hit this week a little bit as well but look at this nice up move on ibm but got hit these last couple days you can see how fast you know a stock moves you know we, we talk about the stocks take the stairs up and the elevator down meaning that it it slowly moves up and then when it gets hit it, it, it gets hit hard and fast the elevator down so ibm got hit, hit a little bit this week google kind of scraping along the lows what else we have Clorox we talked about Clorox too was making this up move and then the flat top so it had the up move with the flat top the resistance here was waiting for it to break out which it did you can see it kind of broke above 150 a number of times and then this week it got knocked back down but it has the 50 day and the 200 day moving average converging right here right around 142 and a half so if it finds support that's where it's going to bounce and hopefully we'll see it go higher from there so that's clorox this is colgate palmolive nice little up move here you know you like i said you can draw the channels just connect some of the tops do it like this connect some of the bottoms do it like that and you can see where the next support and or resistance area may lie now you can see it bounces so had some resistance here so maybe this will be the support area and it'll bounce and continue on in that upward trajectory within the channel you can see you know if you were going to buy clorox i mean colgate palmolive you know maybe this is the area where you might want to step in and buy a few shares it's coming down to the bottom of the channel you've got the 200 day moving average right here at the bottom of the channel as well looking like right around 76 78 76 to 77 dollars a share right here so if you're looking to buy some shares you know maybe that's where you step in see if it bounces if it if it drops through you know then you may hold off or you may not buy as many shares so keep an eye on where it bounces within those channels that's why we use the channels uh, coca-cola one of our favorites as well as it had the nice up move off the oversold areas right here it was a great area to buy some shares right you know you got oversold rsi and the bounce so coca-cola you know great dividend paying company that you hold on for a long time that's just what you do and we looked at con ed and southern so that's it that's pretty much all we've got you know this is my process this is what i do all day long, I look at the charts waiting for those areas of potential bottoming patterns, bounces, and then we jump in on naked put sells and selling put option credit spreads. So that's that for this week. Let's go back to the SPY. Just kind of sum up for what we're seeing possibly for next week. Um, you can see the downtrending channel. SPY is back in it, back in the middle, unfortunately. Unless you're a bear, you're loving it. So um, the momentum may carry it down a little bit lower next week. You know, next line in the sand is 360. Here's the support line. So the bears may be gunning for that. You know, when we have get towards the holidays, the end of the year, these moves can be um, very erratic and, and exacerbated because there's less volume. When there's less volume, you can have these violent moves. So we may see the push lower. Don't want to see it, but it may happen. And hopefully it'll bounce unless we get some major major bullish news next week which i don't see that coming out of the blue uh i think the path of least resistance is either sideways to continue to slowly drip lower unfortunately all right so that's all for me today that's all we got here on this saturday synopsis i hope this has given you some good information just a way to look at charts as as i said as option traders your you know one of the most important decisions for you is to try to figure out you know which way the stock may or may not be headed and then you make your option trade you can't just blindly trade options without knowing you know what the stock may be doing so um please subscribe to this channel if you'd like hit that red subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner of the video leave me a comment below give me a thumbs up if this has been helpful to you send me an email 
to my website. I, I love hearing from you. I'll always answer your emails and, um, you know, just let me know what you're thinking or, you know, what, what kind of options trading questions you have. All right. So that's all for me today. I hope everyone has a great weekend and a great trading week ahead coming into those holidays. So, um, things hopefully, you know, things slow down. You can take a little breather towards the end of the year. Um, have a good weekend, everyone. This is Lee Lowell signing off.